Hey you guys, Randy Richard in the shop. I had to move a few things. My shop's a mess right now. I've been uh, doing a little work. I'll swing around and show you real quick uh, some of the stuff I've been, something I've been working on. Anyway, this is part two to the uh, boring head cutter. Uh, we'll get the milling done and, and finish it up. So it uh, takes a little bit to do that. Uh, got Ray's shirt on. Ray's selling some shirts. Buy a shirt from Ray. Uh, support Ray's channel there and uh, Ray's garage and his links on my will be my video. The bugs are really bad in here. Also, another thing, uh, there's a big fire uh, north of us, about two and a half hours away driving time. But uh, by Chuck Van Natta and Mike Dittman, we're talking real close, like just a few miles. Uh, and up there, that fire has gone in three days. Uh, it started three days ago. Uh, and it's over a hundred thousand acres. It's over a uh, hundred square miles uh, already. Uh, huge fire just burning up the countryside. Uh, they just evacuated a whole town, a town of San Andreas. Uh, so uh, let's hope. Uh, I know uh, I know where Mike and I know uh, Chuck is just a couple past miles past uh, Mike, so a little farther down the hill, but. My brother-in-law also lives right around the corner from Mike. So, uh, yeah, I posted one picture that my sister-in-law uh, sent to us. It, I think it came from a news outfit or something. But my sister-in-law says that they can see the flames uh, from their house. So uh, I'm trying to get this video up here. Uh, uh, it might be a day behind that I'm saying this. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, hectic time I'm afraid to leave the house uh, because of the fire situation so I'm home a lot I'm not going anywhere uh, type of thing it's a dangerous dangerous time here uh, it's so dry uh, anyway and no water right uh, we have water we're doing okay uh, so far so uh, we've been watering our trees since the last since last winter actually the whole time so really we haven't lost any trees because of the drought uh, or the bugs uh, so far uh, this year, uh, my neighbors, he has hundreds of trees. Both of my neighbors have hundreds of trees dying. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible mess. Uh, so, uh, here, let me, uh, I'll swing you around and uh, show you what I've been doing with the X-Carve. So, uh, this is the X-Carve. I got it mounted on the wall, hinged, and folded up right now. I'm, uh, it's in the process of designing uh, some type of clamping arrangement, a bracket or something. But right now I just have it tied up. I'll lower it down and show you. There you go. And that's what it's going to do. It's going to sit right on my bench there. So I made the, I adjusted the, I have the height set so when it sits on the bench it's um, pretty level. Uh, so. That's uh, pretty nice, and I can pull the bench out some and still support it. So, uh, it's going to work out good. Uh, I can be able to get it up out of the way when I'm not using it. And, uh, um, what, uh, what's his name? Bob. Bob on I Like to Make Stuff. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, and he has an X-Carve, and he did something similar where it folds up. Uh, this thing is heavy. Uh, I put a full table under my full, full, full uh, base to it, uh, but still, the thing's heavy. So I'm going to rig uh, maybe some pulleys even to give it a little bit of advantage to get it up there. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to rig up something better than just a, a cord uh, holding it up. Don't worry, the cord won't break. That's 2,250-pound cord. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, so that's what I'm doing right this minute, and I'm still working on it. It's taken me a couple days to get this far, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna work out really good. I mounted the power supply on my switching panel on the side over here, which is really nice. And then I'm also gonna mount the uh, I have a small the small air regulator for that engraving pen, and I'm gonna mount that over there also as soon as I get some of the some better fittings uh, so that the air hose can hook up easier and things like that. This little little baby regulator and, and uh, filter and we're, that goes on the end over there eventually. Oops, there you go. A little, little better picture. 
And uh, having those sides will give me a little bit of dust collection. Now, one of the one reason why I did put it here is this. Right there, see that? You can see this pipe coming down. That's my central vacuum, part of my central vacuum system I have in the attic. That uh, it's piped through the attic, and it's right over the old X carve. So that's going to allow me to hook a hose up in there and have a vacuum hose directly uh, mount on the uh, carriage here. I'll have a type of mount and a flexible hose, and uh, have a vac vacuum system right there, all built in. So I don't have to hook up a, spe a single uh, shop vac or anything like that. This should work out pretty good. So I'm working on that. I'm not shooting any video doing all this, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's coming out good. All I'm going to show you here is the, uh, this is a portable coolant tank and pump setup. Uh, this came with my Logan lathe and boy, it was nasty, nasty. You know, uh, they were using uh, oil in it and boy, it was bad. It took me a long time to get this cleaned up. Uh, but, uh, I finally got, I mean, I got cleaned up over a year ago and, uh, I, wasn't doing videos in so I'm going to try to use it today on the mill and uh, so I just thought I'd show it to you this is a gray mills portable pumping unit and I'm going to swing the camera over here and uh, I'll pop off the tops show you how it's made um, but I like to say I've never used it but I you know I completely reworked everything the pump the motor uh, cleaned it and and stuff uh, I didn't recode it or anything inside but I repainted the top and repainted all the, the top of the motor here and stuff. Anyway, uh, let me swing around and show you this. All right, I took the screws out. Uh, I used uh, roofing screws, actually, because I got nice little ceiling washers on them. Uh, cheap metal ones. There's a little strainer screen. Now, this is where the return coolant will go in here through a little filter or a screen. This comes off and then this whole thing is the pump so there's the pump set up little motor little impeller right here little open open center impeller so that just sits down in there now this is what this is one of the very important parts of how something like this works let me show you show you so this is called a weir now the coolant is going to, this here plate doesn't go to the bottom. There's about an inch or so gap at the bottom, only from the top down. And this, this plate here comes from the bottom up, and it comes about halfway up. Now the, the pump is on this side over here, and this is where the coolant comes in. So the coolant comes in here, and you want to maintain a level. Now, the, only, the highest level in this side here will only be to the, the, the height of this, 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 here, this here dam here. This is called the, the weir. So the coolant will always stay in here flowing, and the oil was, will stay on top. And, and heavy contaminants will be caught over here. And the water will flow. The coolant will be mostly water, about 10% mixture, 90% water. And uh, the coolant will flow up and over the weir. And into here and be clean being pumped out relatively clean so any metal chips or and stuff like that should get caught over here but that's how a weir works and uh, most all coolant tanks or anything where you need to separate out a, a contaminant uh, will be set up like this with a weir sometimes even two weirs have a two weir system uh, to even catch more stuff uh, so uh, just uh, thought I'd show you how this is, is set up uh, it's hard to see, but yeah. So anyway, this, so this dam comes about halfway, and this dam goes all the way to the near to the bottom, about an inch inch gap down there at the bottom. So pump will just sit back in here, and I rigged a cord with a inline switch on it, make it easy to turn on and off. A little coolant hose to come up to my uh, dispenser uh, nozzle. So 
So that will go in there. And uh, I'll screw that, I'll just screw that back down. And we'll be, uh, we'll pour, uh, get a bunch of cool, we'll put a bunch of liquid and coolant in and be ready to go. I'll show you the, um, once I get it over to there set up, I will show, show you it working. I put in uh, six gallons of water and oh, 60 ounces of coolant uh, to make a, you know, 8% or so solution. And uh, right now I have it just circulating uh, to mix the coolant. So we're going to let that run for 10 or 15 minutes and get the coolant mixed throughout. And then uh, we'll get it set up on the mill. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out of there. Over to the drawing, just to show you. So we're going to cut it. So we're going to be cutting this notch out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I got a one inch roughing end mill in there and I'm going to hopefully do just one pass and take out the bulk of it. Then I'm going to go in with the finishing end mill and clean it up. Now that's the plan. I got my coolant set up and uh, this is a high speed seal end mill and we're cutting that 4140 so let's uh, see if this works. It's a four flute rougher. I'm just gonna hand feed this, it's pretty slow. Doing well.
There, one cut. I'm not, got the bulk. Not too bad. Kind of a cool little finish, but uh, <laughs> we're going to go back in uh, with a different end mill here. There you go. You can see the lines from the rougher there. So I still have about 10 thousandths to take off of there. And uh, we're going to do that. See if I got anything. Oh no, I still wasn't all the way in there. Over and do this again. Get steel wool there, huh? Okay, five nine nine nine. Okay, we're good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna flip that block other way. Uh, 90 degrees so this is on top so we can mill our insert slot I'm going to touch off and then uh, move away reset my dial and come up 115 Okay, so I'm up 115. Now I'm just going to kind of go in there and rough it out a little bit. Kind of tough seeing those lines.
That's pretty good. So I'm going to uh, go in here and get a smaller end mill. And we'll do this edge up in here. And then I'm going to have to turn the vise again and reset it up. And then we'll do the other edge. And then uh, we'll be able to put the insert in and drill our hole. There's a shot of uh, how it, I roughed it out. I uh, wiped my finger across there and I took off the Sharpie. Uh, so I put some red dykem on there and rescribed my lines. Uh, now, those lines are just a rough guide. The angle is set by the machine that I've set in the vise. I mean, that's the angle. So I just need to know roughly about how far I need to go up there. And then I can hold the insert to make sure I'm going far enough. Things like that. And I'm going to go a little past on this angle because that's where it's going to give the relief at corner for the end of the, um, the triangle, right? Uh, instead of drill a hole. If I just run past, it will do the uh, same kind of thing. And this is a 155 thousandths uh, end mill, carbide two flute. Now we're going to do that with. So we're 117 thousandths deep. I measured it, and just going to touch here and. There. Hold the insert up there. Uh, how far we go that way determines the depth of cut out here of the insert. We only want about 50, 60 thousandths out there at the pretty much. So I can just kind of hold that there and see where we're going with that because it's going to be up there a little farther. And you can kind of get an idea about how far it's going to be. This is I'm doing a little bit of eye work. It looks pretty good. I'm going to run that up now past the line.
Okay, I got the vise turned 30 degree angle uh, to the table, so and we're ready. We're going to cut that other side, and we'll be testing the insert uh, as we go. Yeah, I should tighten that up, huh? Okay. <laughs> and so we'll be testing the insert as we go uh, to see how much it's going to overhang on the end. Because as we cut that, the insert will move farther in. And uh, we just want to make sure we're just over a tiny, you know, we have a relief on those inserts. So we want that to all be hanging over, basically, because there's no support anyway. And uh, we want 50, 60 thousandths out here on the side here. So we're just going to clean it up first, test it. And we'll do a little bit, little bit until we get to where we want it to be. Then we'll hold it in place and we'll do the pin trick. We'll put the, um, the gauge pin in and get where the hole's going to be and so everything feels right. And then we'll drill, tap, and we'll be done. Okay, I forgot to turn the camera on as I was doing that. Anyway, I'm down to the depth and I just cleaned up the edge. I'm going to try the insert. Sorry about that, guys. I just barely taken off any. Oops. And I had the cameras in the way, of course, and everything. But we're going to try that insert in there. Oh, boy. That looks so good. Uh, okay, we could probably... Oh, a few more thousandths, uh, another 10 or so over, without too much. No, maybe not. Let's see here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this up, take a little more clearance up here at this top end. I probably didn't go quite far enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to run it up into here a little bit. I should have went probably a little bit farther with that. That's okay. We'll just kind of come up here and take a little bit out of that corner uh, when we do our finish. But we could we could go a few more thousandths up in there uh, because of our overhang there. Even though it's not bad, it's, it's really it's probably just fine. I'm going to check this. And, you know, actually, I might just leave it where it's at, actually, because I got some about the right hangover. Get rid of that bird using a stone and a little, a little nicer than using a file. I think I'm going to leave it where we're at. I'm going to drop her down a few thousandths more and then run up there in that corner a little teeny bit, I think. Yeah. So hard to tell without moving everything. Get the old magnifier in there. See if I can... Okay, I decided I'm going to drop it down a couple thousandths, and uh, we're going to run up. We're just going to touch that other side a little bit.
Well, I didn't touch that other side. Uh, I'm going to raise it up, drop her down in. I'm going to put, put her in the hole, and then I'm going to move over because I need to have at least a center line up there to do that. All right, I uh, deburred it there. I took took my uh, little uh, square Arkansas stone here and just kind of went over these edges lightly, just to make sure there's nothing in there and stuff. And uh, that's gonna look really, really good. I just took out a tiny bit in that corner, just. You can hardly even tell I did anything, but it was enough to make sure it's seated really good uh, in there. Oh yeah, that's gonna work good. It's gonna work good. Okay, so we'll uh, we we'll get we'll get uh, our drill and stuff set up here, and we'll put a hole in her and uh, be good to go. Okay, so I got gauge pin for to fit that insert and we just it's a few thousands you know it's like ten thousands up off the base of that slot the pocket so it doesn't touch and then we just kind of move gently don't want to bend your pin and uh, watch for contact on the sides and then you want that you want that thing to move, be able to move up and down it should drop right in there you know you should be able to put that in there tight, and that pin should just drop right in. Without you shouldn't even feel it. Unlock your table, and uh, you're pretty good. Okay, I like to use a spot drill, and. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at eyeing how big it needs to be, so after I drill it, it's already countersunk. Right out there. So now when after I drill that, it will be already countersunk. Now you can calculate that out and figure out exactly how far that needs to go, but... Do it enough, you I like using a little anchor anchor lube works pretty good for this, uh drilling this stuff and tapping it. Okay, we're going to tap this. And now, you use a pretty short screw, so you know you really don't have to tap all the way through. But I'd go until just the until the tip of the tap comes out. And as you can tell, when that's happening, right when you start to see chips, and it gets a little bit harder to tap. You know, this is a 440 tap and some from Chrome Molly. I tell you, it's pretty tough stuff. So make sure you get that chip off the back uh, after you drill it. That that chip can uh, cause you to break your tap.
blew it all out and we'll uh, just test in there. I'm going to do this before I move it from its position in case I have to do something else to that hole or something else. But oh, that feels just perfect. Oh, yeah. Can't even feel a transition really. So that's what you want. Cutting edge is right on center line. Yeah, we like that. Okay, I think we're uh, we're good. It looks really perfect. Uh, we'll clean off the clean it up, pull it out. Okay, there it is, all cleaned up. I'll take some still pictures of it to make it to, so you can get a good idea what it looks like. But there's the back. Boy, the bugs are terrible in the shop today. Oh, it's hot. It's kind of humid. Uh, we get these little face fly deals, and we call them dog pecker flies. <laughs> but they're miserable. Anyway, there's the insert in there. Fits perfect. You can see a little bit overhang, 20, 30 thousandths there, and probably a good 50 thousandths, 60 thousandths on the end there. So I'll take some stills. So you can buy one of these, I think about 35 bucks, uh, some of the tool outfits sell them. More fun to make one. And I had to add some good stock still, so might as well use it. A little scrap piece. We'll uh, be giving it a try. Let me get it fitted up in the born head. Okay, that's it so far. Um, the only thing I need to do now is put a flat on here for orientation so it's uh, the same plane as this okay so there's our tool finished up uh, I did not film putting the flat on there but it only took uh, you know like five minutes to do other than the five minutes to line the vise back up but anyway so we put a little little flat on there that's so it will line up in the The born head. So there's the born head. Now we'll uh, there's set screws, and so you just uh, pop it in there, and that will line up on the tighten the set screws on the flat. That will line up the cutting edge with the axis of the dovetail on the boring head. This is right down the middle. So when you're that makes what what that helps do. What that makes do is makes it so when you do your adjustments, it's accurate. You can put it out there, a little, little wider out. You can put it in here, put it upside down, and uh, you could uh, run it backwards if you really wanted to for really big holes. It should be pretty rigid. It's going to work out nice. going to be uh, liking that. i liking that a lot. I think it came out pretty close to the drawing. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. Anyway, uh, if anybody wants to draw, just email me. I'll uh, uh, PDF it out and mail it off to you. E email it. But you gotta send me an email. I, I won't do it any other way. It's the easiest way. So, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks everybody for watching, subscribing. And a uh, nice new tool out there. Well, we'll see you guys later. Catch you on the next one. This is a boring tool for the boring head. I'm going to make this. This is a... I, I need a better uh, boring setup than the Chinese ones I have. Uh, they're pieces of junk, so I'm just going to make something up. This is a half inch shank up here, a little flat spot on it to clamp it into the right position in the boring head so that when you adjust the boring head, it actually moves that distance uh, so it's indexed properly. We're going to make it out of uh, some uh, alloy steel, 4140 pre hardened chrome molly. It Good stuff, nice and stout, uh, very stiff, 140,000 PSI tensile strength material.
So we're going to use a TBGB 321, the TPGB 321 insert for this. And uh, you can see that notch there uh, where the insert will sit. This will be the same insert I use for my dovetail cutters. That way I kind of keep everything the same, which is kind of nice. This will be about, this is a, be a little less than an inch and a quarter, half inch shank, and a nice little cut out. And you can see the con profile there. Pretty, uh, really, it's pretty simple. Uh, pretty simple to make. Uh, it shouldn't take us too long to do. Hardest part will be actually probably milling the slot out. Uh, I'll probably hog it out with a quarter inch uh, end mill, I think, and then uh, come in and with a small end mill and machine the rest here. Okay, so that's the tool. We're going to make that up and have a new tool for the boring head.